Monday Night Football is back and Manchester United is going to host Liverpool at Old Trafford. Remember, United has lost two games in the row as they really started their Premier League season of 2022-2023, losing 2-1 to Brighton and losing 4-0 to Brentford. Liverpool too is also is also really winless. You get Win Liverpool has not lost any game, but they've lost four points in their previous two games. Remember, they drew with they drew with they drew with Fulham at, at Crovent Cottage 2-2, and they drew with Crystal Palace at Anfield. And that is really something that has really gone ahead to shock everyone at Liverpool in the for you. So I'm here to bring you the match preview, the head to head, and the predicted lineup of Manchester United, and maybe a breakdown of how we really believe United can really go ahead and really either shock Liverpool or Liverpool shocking United at Old Trafford. Welcome to United Matters channel. I go by the names of Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment, and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily obviously obviously it's the biggest rivalry in english football you know that very well because what makes it the biggest rivalry united has won 20 premier league titles and liverpool has 19 and if at all liverpool happened to win one the one that man city took them took took from them took from them on the deadline day they would have lost they would have really equaled united as far as that record is concerned so liverpool comes in at old trafford having not won any of their games and united has lost all of the of their first two games of the season now rock and david is my name let's get into what we call the head-to-head -head brought to you by bbc sport now when you look at the head-to-head -head, united versus liverpool they've played 60 teams 60 team they've played 60 premier league matches amongst them and oh shock shock breaking news leeds has scored its third goal against chelsea remember the first half ended 2 nil, and now they've really solidified their win the fluid attack of leeds has really shown them really get to the levels of really getting to a 3 nil lead to chelsea in the free as i've always told you guys I don't trust Thomas Tuchel, but people don't really believe in me, but I don't believe in him. And I really believe that having a team like that of Chelsea and not being able to beat Leeds, then it's really a very different game of football altogether. So we are waiting to see whether VAR is really going to validate this goal or nullify it. So this is the big wait we are waiting in there for you. But obviously and obviously no offside <laughs> there for you. So let's get back to what we are all about. 60 Premier League games. 60 Premier League games played in between United and Liverpool. United has won 28, Liverpool has won 18, meaning that there are 46 wins in between these two teams and 14 draws. So, United has scored 79 goals and Liverpool has scored 76 goals. Oh my! And I really believe that these recent fixtures of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, where they scored 10, where they scored 9 against United, I think are the ones that have really brought us to this level of not keeping that goal margin that we used to score against them 18 clean sheets kept by united 17 kept by liverpool so it looks like united has an age but in the previous games we've been playing liverpool liverpool has always been battering us left right and center so that is what bbc has for us and they've told us that as far as liverpool and united is concerned and let's get into these other stats coming in from bbc again we've been told by bbc before we get into the predicted lineup and the analysis of this game that manchester united have won just one of their past 12 premier league matches against liverpool with six draws and five losses and are winless in eight since a 2-1 victory in march 2018 manchester united lot Manchester United last had a long winless run against an opponent between 1983 and 1987. That was versus Everton 10 times and we hadn't won against them. So we last won against Liverpool in 2018. That is so much shocking. Liverpool can't come and dominate us to this level. You get? And I can't really expect a win tomorrow, to be frank. If a win comes in, it's going to be a shock to me because the team of United, you can't really trust it if at all that midfield is not settled. So Casemiro is in, but he's not 
eligible to play. You know that very well. He's not going to be part of the team. He might be in the stands, but he won't really put on the shirt of United to come and represent at the field of play. But let's wait and see. Can these players come on the field and fight? That is something you don't expect from them. You don't expect that from the United players because they've shown us on several times that they can't fight for the shirt. So, the other stat reads that Liverpool are looking to win three straight away league matches against United for the first time in their history. So, they are trying to come in at Old Trafford and win three consecutive fixtures. If at all they beat us tomorrow, sorry, so all right, tomorrow they're going to have won three straight away league games against United for the very first time in their history. Now, this is the first time both sides are facing each other within the first three games of the league champion in the league campaign since 2013 2014 when liverpool won one nil at anfield so it shows you that most of the times we rarely face liverpool in our first starting three games of the season but obviously this time around it's happening and the last time it happened liverpool beat us at anfield by one goal to nil in there via bbc now we've been told that this is the first ever flight meeting this is the first top this is the first ever top flight meeting where both teams were winless coming into the match excluding any meetings in the first game of the season in there for you so this is the first the first ever top flight meeting where both teams are winless coming into the match in there for you excluding any meetings with the first game of the season in there for you so those are the stats that bbc have provided us as far as the game of football is concerned liverpool versus manchester united it's united holding the game at old trafford and let's get into this but before i get into the predicted lineup for manchester united this should be noted to me i don't really see i don't see us winning this game i'm going to be shocked if at all we win i don't respect these united players their response is really bad when they go on a bad run they can go on a bad run forever it takes it takes it's only god who knows when they'll get back to their good run so and that midfield of Manchester united does not guarantee me to tell us that i'm going to we are going to put in a shift as far as this liverpool team is concerned because liverpool amid is having injuries of konate joel matip uh, alcantara tiago oxlade chamberlain curtis jones uh, diego jota out and uh doen is suspended they really put up a very good fight against Crystal Palace. To make it clear, they played better as a 10-man team than how they're playing with Doe Nunes in them. So it shows you that Fabinho is back. Fabinho is back, meaning that the front three of Liverpool is, are going to be Diaz, Fabinho, and Salah. Obviously, you expect them to put in a shift to really put United to a stop at Old Trafford. Having humiliated us in the for you last time, 5 0 I don't believe it will go to that level like five goals but i really believe that they're having an edge to go in and win against united in the but this is the lineup i really believe that eric ten hag is going to bring so as to face a side which goes by the names of liverpool because it's all drawn and all set in liverpool's favor it's liverpool decision either to win or to lose because united has set itself into that mode of being a second fiddle to liverpool that wasn't the case way back we are always the first fiddle and we always put in a shift for a side which goes by the names of liverpool each and every time we played against them when you look at the system ten Hag is going to play with four two three one i expect him to play with such a system against liverpool with david de Gea, who made a very big hauler two big haulers as we play the side which goes by the names of I was playing the side which goes when Brentford were lost for nil in goal because we don't have any keeper who can come in and do that job very well. Good short snooper, but good at making holers. But he really made a very big hole at the first goal, and that really made us think, was it wrong? Did Anderson to leave? Obviously, we think about that and we leave it over to you. Then, right back, obviously, Diego Dallo coming in through. United looking in for another right back as Aaron Bissaka is on his move to Crystal Palace. Then, Malasia, I expect him to start ahead of Luxio because all of the two games Luxio has started, he has really looked shit. He has looked ugly, sluggish, doesn't put in a shift, he can't defend, he can't overlap. I really believe that his time at United is over. It's time for Malasia to take over because when Malasia came on the game of Brentford, he played well in those 45 minutes. He defends very well. 
he has a, he has he has good pace on him and he is good going forward and is comfortable on the ball building from behind always starts with your central defenders your full backs being able to be good on the ball and that's what malasia that's why we believe that lucio is not going to start in the starting 11 of manchester united then lisandro martinez obviously starting off the left of the left side of the central defense and guess what this big change is expected it has been buzzing over twitter and all social media platforms and big news outlets that harry Maguire is going to be dropped for rafael verani and obviously when you're playing a team which goes by the name of liverpool with fast forwards Firmino, luis diaz and Mohamed Salah, you can't risk Harry Maguire because he is the same. He is like these guys in history, they forgot and learned nothing. That's what Maguire is all about. He forgets and learns nothing. <laughs> That's it. So I really believe that it's high time we took him out of the starting eleven. And Eric Ten Hag, please don't 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 do anything else but i don't want to see Maguire in the field of play i don't want to see him play for manchester united tomorrow when you're playing liverpool because he's going to cost us goals that's it that's it and we need to have central defenders who are really putting in a shift and i'm so much worried by the way because him being english the reason as to why he's still here if at all he was not english they would have sold him and even the english media is backing him here the guy is trash you get the guy is trash he's trash let the Glazers accept that they made a big mistake of buying Harry Maguire at 80 million pounds. Like Chelsea accepted, they bought Lukaku at 100 million pounds and they loaned him back to Inter Milan. You get? That loss was accepted and that loss of Harry Maguire should be accepted because we are having defenders who can come in and really do the job better than him. So I expect the central defense to be a partnership for Lisandro Martinez and Rafael Veran. Because Rafael Veran is really good and their partnership looks like is going to long last at United. Let's go to the double midfield pivot of United. Fred Rodriguez, obviously, having a hell of the past two games against Brighton and against and against Brentford. I rarely see Freddy being taken off after 45 minutes, by the way. But for the first two games, he never played all those minutes. He played 45 and they took him off. So it looks like he needs to up his game, but he's his tenacity is really not all that to the levels he used to be on and he's not good on the ball most of the times especially when he's getting it from the back four meaning that he's not press resistant especially around the teenage box area of manchester united ericsson is expected to play into that department well again alongside fred rodriguez because he's really good though he needs a CDM to play alongside him like Casemiro. But the bad thing is that Casemiro is not going to be part of this United team that is going to play a side which goes by the names of Liverpool. He's just going to be in the stands. Then, Bruno Fernandes Bogues is expected to start as a central attack midfielder ahead of Freddy and Eriksson. Even Bruno has not been really having a very good game to me. And he came out and really said, because... Agbenoha came out and lashed at Bruno and Bruno said, please, I've never played with you, you never played with me, you don't know me and I don't know you, so have nothing to comment about him. You get? He knows that he can get himself better and he really committed that we are not yet back to where we're supposed to be and we started the season ugly and our entire team and the Dockers in the dressing room, we know this and we have agreed as a team to come in and put up a fight against Liverpool and let's wait and see whether this fight is really going to be put up by these players of Manchester United. Marcus Rashford, one of those players that is really a disappointment in therefore he doesn't put in a shift, doesn't score, doesn't pass. Obviously, he's nowhere near the Rashford we know and he is expected to start onto the left attacking side of the midfield. If at all there were another player, obviously he would have not started because Ten Hag said that he would have substituted all the entire 11 players after half time. If at all he had enough, if at all he really had the goal to go in, if at all he had the authority to go in and be substitute all those players. So we look at Rashford, he wouldn't have started this game if at all like people like Cody Gapko were around. Or Anton, if at all Anton was around, Sancho would have started off the left and Anton would have started off the right. So let's wait and see how that is going to happen when those players really come in through. But Sancho is going to start onto the right attacking side of the midfield for a game of Liverpool. Obviously, 
not having the best of the game but not as bad as Rashford you get at least Sancho is putting in cameos that Rashford is not putting in Rashford is showing us that he's still the same man again he is still the same player like he was last season he shoots from stupid positions he takes aimless shots his his decision making is bad you get when he gets the ball it looks like he doesn't know what he's going to use it for and i really believe that i think it's a time for him he left i've read the story of psg that they really want him let him go let him go let let rashford go to psg let him go because that would have been a very big breather then cristiano ronaldo obviously is going to lead the line for united as we play side which goes by names of liverpool and i've read a story from time sport that why nuni has come out and said ronaldo and rashford shouldn't start and people I'm seeing people saying he's he, he's just jealous about ronaldo no this is the this is this is the fact the fact is the goal that we considered against brentford who caused it it was ronaldo lost the ball and was down crawling that he was he was really he was really forward and then this time we are conceding however much freddy never covered up into his position of a central defensive midfield and the goalkeeper made a very big mistake but you go back to where the mistake started from ronaldo would have headed that ball he knows that he's not good on the ball in tight spaces he's not press resistant so why go ahead and do that control with your chest and then let your ball go down to you and then you complain that you've been fouled yet you're not fouled you get so he's not press resistant he does not press at the front foot so why should he start i support wayne rooney rashford and ronaldo harry Maguire, scott mctomini luke shaw bruno fernandez fred rodriguez close to seven players shouldn't be to the starting level of manchester united if at all we are having we are through having players who are really good at doing this they shouldn't be starting i side with wayne rooney ronaldo is starting because anton martial is back but i don't believe that eric ten Hag is going to start anton martial because he's just returned from injury but you don't know what the manager is having in his thought i really believe that he can start anton martial because he knows that he wants to press on the front foot and ronaldo can't that's it so i really believe that where united is it's in a very very difficult situation and let's hope to see to it that this team really goes ahead and really gets us to where we want to be in here onto the united matters team. that is my predicted lineup of Manchester united i don't know what you think about it but if at all casmero was here obviously i would have played casmero in a single pivot i think if at all casmero was here it would have been Freddy and Casemiro playing in a double pivot. Then Ericsson ahead of them. Bruno would have gone back to the bench. I think Bruno would have gone to the bench. Rashford would have gone to the bench. Bruno would have played as a left attack midfielder. Sancho as a right attack midfielder. And Ronaldo or Martial to lead the line. Because Martial is back in training. You've seen the photos. Today they've not trained. They are preparing for the game tomorrow. But make a point that United is in for Anthony because... Anton is out of the team of Stepta of Ajax that is going to play. Let me check even here. If that game has started, I think it's it's ending. Has it already been played? It looks like that game of Ajax has even ended. But Chelsea is losing by three goals to nil. So United is having a chance to go ahead. If I thought they beat Liverpool, they'll go on and do the need for either for you. And I think Koulibaly has been red carded and this is getting bad for Chelsea by the because they are short in the central defence. They are having less central defenders and I really believe that it's really costing them game in, game out. 85 minutes to play, there are three games goals down and they've been red carded. One player is off the griff. Of a team which goes by the names of Chelsea. So, as things stand, United have to lift themselves up against Liverpool. But will they? I don't really know. I really believe that we are going to get beaten by Liverpool because I see no way how these players lift themselves up. I see no way these players lift themselves up, especially in that midfield. Because, unless otherwise, when Eric Ten Hag thinks of playing James Garner, if he plays James Garner in the central defensive midfield, you get alongside freddy and ericsson in there for you i think it's better you get i think even if he plays james garner scott mctominy and freddy as a midfield three to really put up a very good resistance you get then rafael veran lisandro martinez then the rest can go on and really put up a shift in there for you because 
I see it as a hard game for United. It's very hard for United to go in and really think they're going to come in and win this game. But obviously, your predictions are welcome to the comment section below. I go by the names of Rock and David. First video of the day. But remember, we are coming back with the Anthony story. Very much hot. He has striked. He doesn't want to play for Ajax anymore. He wants out. You get? He wants out and Eric Ten Hag is pushing and his agent is still pushing. Even Anthony is pushing for move outside Ajax to join Manchester United. I go by the names of Rock and David. I sign out for now. See you later. We'll come back from church. Those that have prayed today and those that are praying from home like me. All right. May God bless you and hear your prayers. I'm out.